Good afternoon. This is Dr. Shujay Majumdar from Kolkata. In RSSJ 2022, this is my talk on functional hypogonadism in type 2 diabetes. Now, this is one issue of diabetes management which is often ignored for the simple reason because most of the patients are very reluctant to discuss about their sexual malfunctions. And diabetes is actually one of the causes of functional hypogonadism. Now, what we mean by functional hypogonadism is that there is no structural abnormality in the hypothalamopituitary gonadal axis, but because of the visceral adiposity and the increase in the interleukins and uh, the reduction of the sex hormone binding globulins, the total testosterone level goes down. And this can present in many patients despite having a good control of diabetes with uh, hypogonadal dysfunctions. That includes problems like erectile dysfunctions and uh, so on and so forth. So obviously this class of patients, they have to be assessed particularly the patients come with specific symptoms like a lack of the early morning erection, lack of sexual thoughts and so on and so forth. And one of the clinical findings in such patients is the diminished testicular volume, absent or reduced uh, secondary sexual characteristics like body hair and a pallor. So often these patients also present with a lot of weakness which cannot be explained simply by diabetes. These patients, they have to be investigated properly by the proper collection of the blood sample and that includes the testing for the testosterone and the pooled FSH and LH assay. In addition, other tests like the thyroid function tests have to be done. The cutoff limit which suggests that if the testosterone level is less than 2.3 nanograms per deciliter, the patients need a treatment. But again, the treatment is not only, only with testosterone replacement. Most of the time, the patients can respond pretty well if they can reduce their visceral adiposity. So a reduction of the visceral adiposity can increase the sex hormone binding globulin and concurrently increase the level of the circulating testosterone levels. It has also been seen that testosterone replacement can play a big role in many patients who are in the pre-diabetic stage to prevent a conversion to the full-blown diabetes and the figure is as high as nearly 13%. So nearly 13% patients can be saved from the evolution from a pre-diabetic to a diabetic stage by the addition of a testosterone therapy and this is something which has been established by the recently published T4DM study. What is important is the choice of medications and how frequently we assess for the outcome for the testosterone therapy in such patients because uh, usually after starting the testosterone replacement these patients are assessed once every three to six months and if there is no response within six months to one year we have to discontinue the treatment. Testosterone therapy mainly brings about a change in the sexual function and testosterone therapy should not be used for treatment of other underlying conditions like depression, which can happen because of the functional hypogonadism. The depression needs a separate treatment. On the whole, patients on testosterone replacement therapy have to be monitored for certain side effects like the development of a polycythemia if the hematocrit crosses 48%, then you have to be very, very careful about continuation of testosterone therapy because a further rise in the hematocrit can give rise to other macrovascular abnormalities like stroke. Also, the prostate-specific antigen of the PSA has to be monitored as testosterone therapy can lead to the development of prostatic malignancy. It is strictly contraindicated in people who have got a breast cancer, particularly the male breast cancer. It is simply, or people who have had a history of a male breast cancer in such patients, uh, this testosterone therapy is completely contraindicated. On the whole, the final take-home message for the audience is that a hypogonadism in diabetes is not an uncommon condition. It happens in up to 23% of patients. So any patient presenting with even some degree of sexual dysfunction should be fully evaluated for the testosterone replacement therapy. And I can conclude by saying that properly monitored testosterone therapy in such situations can actually bring about a significant change in the outcome. Thank you very much.